Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to look at a barrel from Geisley. First, we'll take a look at the specs. Then, we'll do a more thorough look at things on the bench. And after that, we'll head to the range and shoot some 30-shot groups and see how it does. All right, so this is a 16 and a quarter inch Cold Hammer Forge barrel made from chrome moly vanadium steel with a chrome line bore and chamber. And due to the Cold Hammer forging and the chrome lining, the barrel should have a pretty long service life. Geisley also advertises that their barrels are high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. And Geisley also states that the accuracy and reliability of Geisley Cold Hammer Forge barrels make them an ideal choice for hard use duty weapon, precision tuned competition gun, and everything in between. The exterior finish is a manganese phosphate, which gives the barrel a nice consistent matte black look. The barrel has a Geisley taper profile, which basically means that the barrel has a relatively consistent taper from the chamber to the muzzle end. The barrel weighs about the same as a 16 inch government profile barrel, but due to the tapered profile, it has more weight bias towards the rear. The barrel has a 5.56 nano chamber and a 1 in 7 twist rate, which is pretty typical for a duty use type of barrel and better suited for heavier projectiles. It has a mid length gas system with a 0 0.750 gas block journal and the barrel does have a single dimple for a gas block set screw. The advertised gas port size is 0 0.078 inches. However, when I measure the gas port size with a gauge pin, the largest gauge pin I could use was a 0 0.077, which is fine, and it should mean that the barrel is gas pretty good, but we'll check that at the range. Now, we'll take a closer look at the barrel on the bench before we go shoot some groups. First, we'll check out the throat erosion gauge to see where this barrel is starting out at, and the barrel is gauging at a 1, which is what I would expect. And next, we'll take a look through the bore scope. I should mention that you'll see some copper and other stuff in the barrel. This is how the barrel came from the factory, since it was factory test fired, which is fine with me. But I did clean out the barrel prior to taking it to the range for the first time. Anyway, here's a look at the throat, which looks nice and consistent. And as we move up the bore, we can get a better look at the rifling. The bright chrome finish makes things pretty easy to see, which is kind of nice. And the rifling looks well formed. Here's a look at the gas port, which looks like it might have the slightest bit of a burr on there which is no big deal, and I'll probably get shot up in the first round or two. And here's a look at the crown, which looks pretty good to me. All right, next we'll go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. The barrel was fit into a tight-fitting upper receiver. After greasing the threads, the barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot-pounds. The barrel was clean prior to this range strip. The handguard is free-floated. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. A 3-inch bag rider is used to fit the front rest. Short screws were used with a bag rider to avoid contacting the barrel. An A5 ex receiver extension is installed with an A5-0 buffer and spring code green spring. Trigger is a Geisley two-stage super dynamic three-gun trigger. A few rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope mount torque was confirmed at 60 inch pounds and scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20 and parallax is set at 100 yards. The barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller between each group. The velocity of each shot will be recorded by a chronograph which is placed a minimum of 15 feet away from the muzzle. This avoids the muzzle blast triggering the sensors. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing and the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group to get a decent sample size and realistic expectation of what this barrel can do in a match type setting. All groups will be fired at 100 yards. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target. The rifle is zeroed so the point of impact is higher than the point of aim. The rifle will be shot from the prone with a front rest and rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. Today I'll be shooting three groups. The first group will be with 55 grain PMC bronze. The second group will be with federal gold medal 77 grain Sierra Match Kings. And the last group will be with Berger 77 grain OTMs. All right, so here's the first group of the day with the 55 grain PMC bronze. The weather is pretty nice. It had rained the night before, so the humidity was a little bit higher than normal. And the wind was really calm like it normally is. As far as the shooting goes, I had one, maybe two shots that didn't feel great, but we'll talk about those in a minute. And you can see the ejection looks pretty good with the A5 dash shield buffer. And we'll finish up here and then take a closer look at the group. All right, so here's the group for the 55 grain PMC bronze. We had an average velocity of a 2730 with an SD of 23 and extreme spread of 104. The average rifle stability score was 99.5. Uh, usually my average is about 99.6, so this is just a little bit below average. We had a group size of 3.274 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.953 MOA. And that's about what I expect out of PMC bronze. And the group looks to be fairly well circular without any real outliers, although shot number two is a little bit high. But we'll take a look at shot number two, one, and 26. So shot number two had a velocity above average, and then the rifle stability score was 98.8, or 98.9. Uh, usually I like to see the stability score of 99.0 or higher, so this is just a little bit low. Uh, so this being high may have been may have been me by a little bit. 
And then next we'll take a look at shot number one, which had a velocity that was just a little bit higher than average and a stability score 99.5. And then last we'll take a look at shot number 26, which was also higher than average velocity and a stability score of 99.8. And next we'll take a look at the velocity highs and lows just because. So the lowest velocity was shot number 13, which is up here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number eight, which is right here. All right, and to make things a little bit easier to put into context, here is the 30-shot group broken down into six five-shot groups and then also into uh, three uh, ten-shot groups. So for the five-shot groups, the smallest five-shot group was 1.9 MOA and the largest five-shot group was 2.9 MOA with an average five-shot group size at 2.2 MOA. And if you break things down into 10-shot groups, the smallest 10-shot group was 2.2 MOA, and the largest 10-shot group was 3.0 MOA, with an average 10-shot group size of 2.7 MOA. And with that, we will look at the next group. All right, here is the second group of the day. It is the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Sierra Match Kings. The wind is still staying pretty calm, and the shooting felt pretty good for the most part. But we'll have a couple of things to talk about for this group when we take a closer look. The ejection looked pretty good for the most part, with most of the brass ejecting around 4 o'clock and a few kicking up towards uh, 3 o'clock. So we'll finish out the group and then take a closer look. All right, so here is a group for the Geisley Barrel with the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Sierra Match Kings. We had an average velocity of 2,409 feet per second with a standard deviation of 16 and extreme spread of 69. So the velocity is a little bit low for a 77 grain load, but the standard deviation looks pretty good at 16. And for the rifle stability, we had an average of 99.6, which is about my, my average. And if we look at the group size, the group measured in at 2.284 MOA with a mean radius of 0 0.509 MOA. Uh, but the group looks a little bit off, so we had, kind of have these two shots, number 21 and 30, that are kind of off in the middle of nowhere. And then 26, 7, and 15 are, are still a little bit uh, away from the group. But anyway, we'll look at a couple of these, of these shots and see if there's anything to see. So starting with shot number 21, the velocity was a little bit above our average, and the rifle stability was 99.7. And moving on to shot number 30, the velocity was, I think, the second highest of the group and the stability up was at 99.6. And if we go down to shot number 26, velocity was below average, and the rifle stability was 99.6. Uh, let's see here, and then shot number seven, below average, 99.9 stability. And shot number 15 was below average, which I think that might be the lowest, lowest velocity of the, of the bunch, and stability at 99.3. So none of the shots felt really far off. Um, it wasn't necessarily my best shooting ever, but uh, anyway, this is where we ended up. So the mean radius is, is pretty good, at least in my opinion, of uh, you know, low 0.5s, but the group size is a little bit higher than what I, expect, what I would expect uh, for this good of a mean radius. So uh, I guess it is what it is. Um, we'll also take a, a closer look at the velocity highs and lows. I'm a, I, think we already, uh, I think we already went over those. So yeah, the, the lowest velocity shot was shot number 15, which is here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number 29, which is right here. And then we'll see if we have any uh, anomalies with the rifle stability. So the least stable shot was shot number 17, which is pretty close to the middle right here. All right, and here is the 30-shot group broken down into six five-shot groups and three 10-shot groups. The smallest five-shot group was 0 0.8 MOA, and the largest five-shot group was 1.7 MOA, with an average five-shot group size of 1.3 MOA. And for the 10-shot groups, the smallest 10-shot group was 1.4 MOA, the largest 10-shot group was 1.7 MOA, with an average 10-shot group size of 1.5 MOA. And next up, we have some 77 grain burgers. All right, the last group of the day is with the 77 grain burgers. This load usually shoots pretty well, which it should since it's hard to go wrong with burger bullets and the pool brass. It also has a really high velocity. I think it's almost 200 feet faster than the Federal Gold Medal load. Anyway, the wind is pretty calm. The ejection pattern is pretty consistent. And there's nothing really too out of the ordinary as far as the shooting goes. So we will finish up here and then take a closer look. This is the 77 grain burgers out of the Geisley barrel. We had a velocity of 2582, which is, I think it's over 150 feet faster than the federal load, so that's uh, quite a bit more. The standard deviation was 28, which usually I would uh, expect a little bit less out of the out of this ammo, but that's what we got. An extreme spread of 127. The group size was 2.038 MOA, with a mean radius of 0.556 MOA. 
which is pretty good. Um, obviously, the, the mean radius is a little bit worse than the federal load, and then the group size is a little bit better, which is kind of what I was talking about with the federal load, is that I would expect a, a smaller group size for the, uh, the federal mean radius of uh, 0.50. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look at this group. Um, the group looks a little bit tall and narrow, so we'll see what we can see with this, uh, with this group. So we'll take a look at a couple of these shots. Uh, let's go with 28, 25, and 13. So first shot number 28, the velocity was higher than the average and a stability score at 99.6. And then shot number 25 was the highest velocity of the group and then a stability score of 99.9. .9. And last shot number 13, we have a velocity that was a little bit higher than average and then a stability score at 98.9, .9, which is lower than what I like to see. And I think that was the least stable shot. We'll take a quick look here. And yeah, that was the uh, shot number 13 was the least stable shot. So uh, I suppose that could have been me. But, uh, you know, it's just, just below the threshold that, that I like to see. And then we'll also take a peek at uh, shot number 14 since it also was a little bit on the lower side. And shot number 14 is right here. And next we'll take a look at the velocity highs and lows. So the high, or excuse me, the lowest velocity was shot number 4, which is right here. And then the highest velocity was shot number 25, which is right here. All right, and here are things broken down into five shot and 10 shot groups. The smallest five shot group was 0 0.8 MOA and the largest five shot group was 2.0 MOA with an average five shot group size of 1.5 MOA. And for the group broken down into 10 shot groups, the smallest 10 shot group was 1.4 MOA. The largest was 2.0 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 1.8 MOA. And next we'll look at the overall results. Before we get to the overall results, I wanted to let you guys know that I started a Patreon page and have a Venmo account set up. If you are in the position to help out, it would go a long way to help me pay for ammo and other gear to keep these tests going. If not, no worries. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll get back to it. All right, so we're going to do something a little different here for the overall results. Shout out to Shoot and Bruin 3614 for getting my wheels turned in about this. So, as fun as it is to talk about mean radius and extreme spreads, it's a little bit abstract. So, to make things more engaging, I figured we could use a budget hit probability calculation to put things in a little bit more practical perspective. So, I multiplied the mean radius by 3.5 to get a theoretical extreme spread. The 3.5 multiplier came from Jaden and Miles on the Hornady Manufacturing Podcast, episode 99, where they said the extreme spread is usually three to four times larger than the mean radius. So since they're pretty smart, I just cut it down the middle and called it three and a half. And if we compare the observed extreme spread to the new theoretical extreme spread, they match up pretty close most of the time. So it seems like this number should work out just fine. The reason why I'm not using the observed extreme spread is because by using this calculation, it's more resistant to outliers. Like you can see here with the federal group, federal group there is a pretty big difference between the observed extreme spread and the uh, calculated extreme spread, which probably means that I shanked uh, one or two of these shots. Anyway, based on this new number, I calculated the maximum range I could get 100% A-zone hits on a USPSA target. For reference, a USPSA lower A-zone is 5.91 inches wide and 11.02 inches tall. So we end up with these numbers here, uh, which represent a, the farthest distance that I could get close to a 100% hit probability on an A-zone with the setup and conditions that I had for shooting the groups. Meaning the rifle was as stable as I could get it, no time limit, basically no wind, perfect zero, and perfect dope. Uh, for me, this makes it a lot easier to see the practical implications of the mean radius, versus if I just look at the raw mean radius numbers, it's hard for me to understand how these numbers relate to uh, real world performance. Uh, anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. If you like it or think I should do something different, I'd like to get some feedback on it. All right, so getting back to it, we can see that the 277 grain loads had a pretty similar performance with 100% A-zone hits at 317 and 290 yards. And unsurprisingly, the PMC Bronze gets all alphas at only 169 yards. Next up, we'll take a look at the leaderboard to see how this compares to the other barrels that I've tested so far. Okay, so here's what I got for the leaderboard. Keep in mind that these scores are based on one barrel, and the same model barrel from the same manufacturer might do better or worse. Also, I'm not a perfect shoot shooter, so these barrels are capable of at least a little bit better performance than what I'm able to get out of them. And I may not have shot each barrel equally well, and there are a couple of other caveats, but I think you get the point. This isn't perfect data, but this is the best that I can do. Anyway, I did the same pseudo hit probability equation here to get the max range for all alphas on a USPSA target, and the Geisley was able to score a solid second place, it's a pretty decent amount behind the Roscoe barrel and a pretty decent amount ahead of the worn out Criterion barrel, which it should be since the Criterion had uh, 15,000 rounds through it. But yeah, it's a pretty solid performance out of the Geisley. Let me know in the comments below if you expected this barrel to do better or worse. And again, if you could give me some feedback on the new budget hit probability equation that I'm doing, uh, that would be pretty helpful. That'll do it for this video.
If you want to like, comment, and subscribe, that would help me out a lot. And I'll see you next time. Later.